turned black as night. Well, I saw them people running and born. What a terrible sight. I'll tell you who I saw them. I saw Mary. Saw Martha running too. Lord, I saw me. I saw Martha running. And I heard my good old mama calling. She said, child, what we gonna do? I told her. She said, we got stormy, stormy weather. Stormy weather on the bottom. She said, whoa, we got strong weather, strong weather on the ground. She said, whoa, we got strong weather on the ground. And people are having so, so much trouble for us trying to leave it up. Come on, my baby.
música
Do you feel that these days jazz is, is starting to be seen in a different light, perhaps, to the way it was 20, 30 years ago? Not especially. I think it's a mu First of all, I, to clarify myself, I, I don't use the term jazz. I use the term African-American music. I think what Chris has done uh, very well from a technical point of view is to bring together the rhythms and harmonies and melodies of African-American Ameri African music in the United States with traditional African music uh, in Africa. Uh, so I think it's, his music is innovative in a way, and that a term like jazz is restrictive because it doesn't uh, connote all the possibilities of uh, this kind of music. Mm. Well, it's, it's a new form, or well, it has that possibility. But the roots of jazz, therefore, are very much in Africa. Yeah, well, the roots are there. And they are in the diaspora, in the West Indies, in the United States. Of course, it, it begins in Africa. Yeah. How would you describe the state of the blues today in America? Well, it's probably much stronger than, than what you call jazz. I think it, because it's a commercial music, it's becoming much more popular. And uh, I, I think blues groups have, uh, the roots of the blues have been absorbed uh, by many of the so-called jazz groups, Miles Davis, Hancock, and these people. Uh, so uh, blues is very much with us. Uh, what, what, I, what I despair over is the fact that the music of people like Tad Dameron and, and even Ellington is uh, gradually being forgotten. Or being, or being changed to the extent that uh, the, the, the real meaning of the music is lost. Why do you think that is? For commercial reasons. Um, we live in a world which is more and more given over to uh, success. Uh, young people today don't necessarily want to go into that kind of music that we played in the 40s and 50s and the early 60s because it's not profitable. And even in the case of my oldest son, who's, who plays the drums, his oldest son plays the drums, I encouraged uh, my son uh, to play popular music and not to try to play uh, jazz because it's, uh, I think it's a very frustrating experience in many ways. We all know, of course, we all know, of course, that the industry to a large extent is governed by money. And listening to what Archie Shepard just said about commercialism, I'd like to ask you, Chris, as someone born in, in South Africa, what you think, for instance, about someone like Paul Simon, who went to South Africa to work with South African musicians, Ladysmith, Black Mambazo. Some people felt that that was a form of imperialism in a way, that it was wrong for him to go there. On the other hand, when he toured with that group of musicians here in Europe, a lot of people here for the first time were able to hear that particular group from South Africa. What's your own feeling about that situation? Uh, my feeling is absolutely unhostile to, to Paul Simon. I, I, uh, I think he saw a possibility and, and um, went to do it. And, and I understand very much his attraction for the, for the music which he was attracted to. I, um, uh, it would be ridiculous for me to fault him, you understand? In a way, I'm in that same position. Yeah. I'm uh, using my ears and contributing what I can, where I can. So uh, I think Paul Simon did a great job, really. Archie Shirt, what are your feelings on, on this subject? Well, it's an old subject, and uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I don't equate what Chris is doing with what Paul Simon uh, ultimately did, <clears throat> because uh, I think, uh, although his intentions were essentially good, uh, there's no question but what there was a certainly a commercial aspect uh, to his uh, association with this, uh, with this group. My question would be, in a context like that, why does it take a white man to discover black men? Yes, sure. Why do we need Paul Simon to, to, to know about these people? Obviously, there are very obvious reasons for this, uh, which go deep into this music and all other kinds of music. And perhaps, uh, uh, ultimately, there is a, a subtle form of racism involved uh, in this uh, uh, discovery. You know, it's, it's like Columbus discovered America. Uh, people of color seem not to exist until they're discovered by someone from the West. So to that degree, I think that Paul Simon, uh, there's an upside and a downside. Uh, certainly there were positive aspects in that he brought, brought these guys out of South Africa, he exposed them to a, a much larger public, and gave them a standard of living. So he's responsible for their survival in a way. 
but I think it's a token kind of survival because, after all, look how many other groups are back in South Africa. Must, must we keep sending Paul Simons there to bring them out, or is there some other more rational, uh, humane way to allow a people's music to emerge on its own terms? I agree with you too. I think what you're doing by playing together is the right thing to do, quite simply, without spending too much time talking about it, just to play together. I thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh-huh. 